Mount Baker may look like a peaceful, snow-covered giant, but beneath its serene exterior lies an active volcano capable of catastrophic destruction. What would happen if this sleeping giant roared back to life? Could nearby communities, industries, and even global climates survive the chaos? Let's find out what Mount Baker's next eruption could mean for all of us. Nestled in the rugged Cascade Range of Washington State, Mount Baker is more than just a postcard-perfect peak. It's one of the most thermally active volcanoes in the region, with a past that includes fiery eruptions and rivers of lava reshaping the landscape. For decades, this majestic mountain has drawn hikers, adventurers, and nature lovers, but its calm demeanor masks a volatile history. If Mount Baker were to erupt today, the consequences could ripple far beyond the Pacific Northwest. Imagine fast-moving pyroclastic flows obliterating everything in their path, massive lahars flooding valleys, and volcanic ash grounding flights across North America. Entire communities could face evacuation, and vital resources could be buried under layers of ash and debris. But how prepared are we for such a disaster? What signs would signal an impending eruption? And what measures are in place to protect lives and livelihoods? In this video, we'll dive into Mount Baker's fascinating history of eruptions, the warning signs experts monitor, and the devastating potential of its next big event. Stick with us as we unravel the science behind one of North America's most powerful natural wonders, and discover why we can't afford to ignore the threat it poses. Around 3.72 million years ago, a towering glacier-capped peak stood in what is now Washington State. This formidable mountain, however, was an active volcano known as Hannigan Peak. It met a dramatic end when a massive eruption caused its summit to collapse, forming a vast caldera nearly five miles wide. Over the next 2.5 million years, a second volcanic structure emerged approximately 10 miles to the west-southwest. This, too, experienced a catastrophic eruption, creating the Kulshan Caldera around 1.15 million years ago. Following a pause in volcanic activity, a new edifice began to form about six miles further southwest. This structure eventually became modern Mount Baker, which, unlike its predecessors, has yet to experience a caldera-forming eruption. However, the history of its neighboring stratovolcanoes and the composition of its volcanic material, primarily andesitic to dacitic, with occasional rhyolitic eruptions, indicate that Mount Baker could, in the distant future, produce a similarly catastrophic event. Mount Baker's hazards extend beyond its potential for explosive eruptions. The volcano, historically the second most active in the Cascade Range, is cloaked in 1.8 cubic kilometers of glacial ice. During an eruption, a significant portion of this ice could melt, generating lahars, fast-moving volcanic mudflows, that could travel great distances and reach heights of several hundred feet. These hazards place nearly 87,000 people living in lahar risk zones in danger, making Mount Baker second only to Mount Rainier in this regard within Washington State. In the past 10,000 years, Mount Baker has produced at least four large lahars, some likely triggered by eruptions and others by non-eruptive processes. Combined with its relatively frequent eruptive history, these factors have led to its classification as a very high threat volcano. This assessment is underscored by a magma intrusion beneath the volcano in 1975, which, while not resulting in an eruption, highlighted Mount Baker's ongoing activity. Since then, the volcano has continued to degaude at elevated levels through its fumaroles, making gas plumes a common sight above its summit. Mount Baker is part of the broader Baker volcanic field, which includes the remnants of the Kulshan and Hannigan calderas. Over the last several million years, volcanic activity in this region has migrated southwestward, with Mount Baker beginning to form approximately 495,000 years ago. Like all Cascade Range volcanoes, Mount Baker owes its existence to the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate beneath the North American plate, a geologic process that continues to fuel volcanic activity in the region. The earliest phase of Mount Baker's volcanic activity was characterized by a mix of explosive volcanian eruptions and the emplacement of andesitic lava flows. These eruptions built a prominent central cone, which likely rose over 1,000 feet higher than the modern-day summit. This towering cone was covered by glaciers that subsequently eroded much of the structure, 
leaving behind what is now referred to as the Lava Divide. Despite this erosion, remnants of the initial cone remain as a testament to the volcano's early formative period. During the latter stages of Lava Divide's activity, and acidic lava began erupting at what would eventually become Mount Baker's highest peak. These flows continued intermittently until around 366,000 years ago. Following this phase, the volcanic focus shifted to a new vent, creating the Black Butte Satellite Cone. This vent remained active between 350,000 and 288,000 years ago, contributing significantly to the surrounding volcanic landscape. About 140,000 years ago, activity transitioned to the formation of Mount Baker's main cone. By this time, there were already prominent volcanic cones to the northeast and southwest. However, for the next 100,000 years, eruptions at the main cone were primarily explosive, generating large volumes of ash but minimal lava. This explosive behavior slowed the cone's growth, preventing it from rapidly increasing in size. A major shift occurred around 40,000 years ago, when the volcano's eruptions became less explosive. This change marked the beginning of a significant phase of cone building. Nearly all of Mount Baker's modern summit was constructed during this period through over 100 distinct explosive and effusive eruptions originating from the now-buried Carmelo Crater. One notable feature from this era is the Schreiber's Meadow Cone, a flank cinder cone that formed approximately 10,000 years ago, south of Mount Baker's summit. This vent produced a substantial basaltic lava flow that extended 12 kilometers, 7.5 miles, from its source. However, since about 7,500 years ago, all volcanic activity has been concentrated at Sherman Crater, a vent located roughly half a mile south of the summit. During this time, several large lahars occurred particularly between 4,700 BCE and 3,800 BCE. After a long period of dormancy, Mount Baker erupted again in 1820 with a phreatic, steam-driven explosion at its summit. A more significant eruption followed in 1843, producing a lahar alongside its explosive activity. Between 1846 and 1880, Sherman Crater experienced up to a dozen additional small phreatic eruptions. Since then, volcanic activity has subsided, but Sherman Crater remains the most likely source of any future eruptions from Mount Baker. So, how Mount Baker's volcanic eruption would impact Metro Vancouver and Fraser Valley? If Mount Baker were to erupt, the impact on Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley would be significant, despite the volcano's distance of about 100 kilometers. One of the primary concerns would be ashfall. Depending on wind patterns, Volcanic ash could drift into these regions, blanketing areas with fine particles. This would create serious health hazards, particularly for vulnerable populations such as children, the elderly, and individuals with respiratory conditions like asthma. Ashfall would also disrupt daily life, contaminating water supplies, damaging vehicles, and making roads hazardous by reducing visibility and causing slippery conditions. Transportation and infrastructure in these areas would face substantial challenges. Volcanic ash, which is highly abrasive, could ground flights at Vancouver International Airport, leading to widespread travel disruptions. Power outages might occur as ash accumulation damages power lines and transformers, while critical infrastructure like bridges and railways could be affected by flooding or ash deposits, hindering the movement of goods and people. Water contamination would be another major issue. Ash could infiltrate surface water and groundwater supplies, jeopardizing the drinking water in the Fraser Valley. Agriculture, a cornerstone of the Fraser Valley's economy, would also suffer heavily. Crops and livestock would be at risk from ash contamination and potential acid rain, leading to significant financial losses for farmers. The economic consequences would extend beyond agriculture. Businesses in Metro Vancouver could face disruptions from prolonged power outages and transportation issues, while tourism would likely decline as visitors avoid the region during the aftermath of the eruption. Long-term environmental effects could further compound the situation. Volcanic gases released into the atmosphere, such as sulfur dioxide, could contribute to short-term global cooling, altering regional weather patterns. The ecosystems in the Fraser Valley would also be affected, with ash and acidic deposits damaging plant life and wildlife habitats. Emergency response would present its own challenges. 
While Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley are outside the immediate danger zone for pyroclastic flows and lahars, an influx of evacuees from nearby areas in the U.S., such as Whatcom County, could strain local resources. Cross-border coordination between Canadian and U.S. authorities would be critical to managing the disaster effectively. Although these regions are not directly in the volcano's immediate danger zone, the cascading effects of ashfall, water contamination, transportation disruptions, and economic setbacks would make Mount Baker's eruption a disaster with widespread repercussions. Preparing for such an event would require a robust and coordinated effort to minimize its impact. How does a Mount Baker eruption compare to eruptions from Glacier Peak, Mount Rainier, and Mount Adams? Mount Baker, Glacier Peak, Mount Rainier, and Mount Adams are all active stratovolcanoes within the Cascade Range, yet their eruptive histories, styles, and associated hazards vary significantly due to differences in magma composition, eruption frequency, and the extent of their glacial coverage. Mount Baker's eruptions are typically andesitic to dacitic, with occasional rhyolitic events. Its eruptions range from explosive to effusive, but its most notable hazards come from its extensive glacier cover, which holds approximately 1.8 cubic kilometers of ice. This makes lahars, the fast-moving volcanic mudflows, a primary concern, as they can travel long distances and impact nearby communities. While Mount Baker's last major eruptive activity occurred in the 19th century, marked by phreatic eruptions from Sherman Crater, it has also experienced at least four significant lahars in the last 10,000 years. Compared to its neighbors, Mount Baker is less explosive, but presents a significant lahar hazard, similar to Mount Rainier, though on a smaller scale due to its reduced ice volume. Glacier Peak, in contrast, is known for its highly explosive eruptions, driven by its dacitic magma composition. Its eruptions have historically produced large volumes of ash, with some events blanketing regions as far away as Montana. While lahars are a potential hazard, ashfall has been Glacier Peak's most impactful consequence. Its last major eruptions occurred around 13,000 years ago, with some smaller activity approximately 1,800 years ago. Although less active in modern times than Mount Baker, Glacier Peak has a history of more explosive and ash-heavy eruptions. Mount Rainier stands out as the Cascade Volcano, with the greatest lahar hazard due to its extensive glacial system, which holds over 4 cubic kilometers of ice, the largest in the region. Its eruptions are typically andesitic and moderate in explosivity, often producing lava flows and domes. However, lahars from Mount Rainier have traveled over 100 kilometers, reaching the Puget Sound lowlands and posing risks to densely populated areas. While its last major eruption occurred around 1,000 years ago, Rainier's eruptive and non-eruptive activity during the Holocene has frequently triggered lahars, making it one of the most hazardous volcanoes in the Cascades. Though Mount Baker's lahar risks are significant, they are surpassed by those of Mount Rainier due to its larger ice volume and proximity to more people. Mount Adams, the largest volcano by volume in the Cascades, differs from the others in that its eruptions are primarily effusive, producing extensive basaltic and andesitic lava flows. Explosive activity at Mount Adams is rare, and it has limited glacier cover, reducing the likelihood of major lahars. Its last significant activity occurred about 1,000 years ago, with the formation of lava flows and small cones. Compared to Mount Baker, Glacier Peak, and Mount Rainier, Mount Adams is much less hazardous, as its eruptions are less explosive and do not generate significant ashfall or widespread lahars. In a nutshell, Glacier Peak is the most explosive volcano in the Cascades, while Mount Rainier poses the highest lahar threat due to its vast glacier coverage. Mount Baker, while less explosive than Glacier Peak, has a considerable lahar risk due to its ice volume, which makes it somewhat similar to Mount Rainier, albeit on a smaller scale. Mount Adams is the least hazardous, as its activity primarily involves effusive lava flows with minimal explosive potential. Lastly, many may wonder, could Mount Baker be a serious threat to Canada? Mount Baker does pose potential hazards to Canada, particularly to southern British Columbia, due to its proximity to the Canadian border and the potential for far-reaching effects from volcanic activity. While the volcano is located in Washington State, USA, its position just 30 kilometers, 18 miles, south of the border, means that an eruption could have significant transboundary impacts, 
particularly in the form of lahars, ashfall, and possibly volcanic gases. One of the most serious risks posed by Mount Baker to Canada is from lahars, which are fast-moving volcanic mudflows created when volcanic activity melts large amounts of glacier ice or snow. Mount Baker is heavily glaciated, with around 1.8 cubic kilometers of ice covering its slopes. In the event of an eruption, this ice could rapidly melt, sending lahars down the Nooksack River, Baker River, or other nearby river systems. While most lahar flows would initially travel westward into Washington state, their sheer scale and speed could have secondary effects in Canada. For example, lahars could disrupt the Fraser River system, which serves as a key economic and environmental artery for British Columbia. Flooding or sedimentation caused by lahars might indirectly affect Canadian infrastructure, agriculture, or natural habitats downstream. Communities in southern British Columbia, such as Abbotsford, Chilliwack, and areas along the Fraser Valley, could face threats if volcanic activity triggered flooding or other cross-border hydrological impacts. Even if lahars do not directly flow into Canada, interconnected river systems could carry sediment and other volcanic materials northward, posing risks to water quality and aquatic ecosystems. Ashfall is another major hazard from Mount Baker that could significantly affect Canada. Explosive eruptions, especially those involving the volcano's dacitic magma, can produce ash plumes that rise tens of kilometers into the atmosphere. The prevailing winds in the region often carry volcanic ash northeastward, which means that large amounts of ash could settle over British Columbia, particularly in the lower mainland and Fraser Valley. Even minor ashfall can disrupt transportation, damage crops, contaminate water supplies, and cause health problems, especially for people with respiratory conditions. In the event of a major eruption, airports in Vancouver, Abbotsford, and other nearby regions could face closures due to ash in the air, significantly impacting travel and commerce. Ash could also interfere with power grids and communication systems, as fine volcanic particles can damage equipment. Although less likely, volcanic gas emissions from a major eruption could also affect Canada. Sulfur dioxide, SO2, and other gases emitted during an eruption can contribute to acid rain, harming crops, forests, and water systems in areas downwind of the volcano. If Mount Baker were to experience a particularly large eruption, it might even have regional climate effects, such as temporary cooling caused by volcanic aerosols in the atmosphere. Mount Baker is not just a towering symbol of the Pacific Northwest's natural beauty, it's also a powerful reminder of the dynamic forces shaping our planet. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more explorations of the world's most fascinating volcanoes. Stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.